recording. So thank you for joining us today on November 3rd uh, for our next webinar with the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. I need to mute myself. There we go. Um, we are happy to have Kendra Windish here with us talking about how to spot skin cancer. So Kendra, please take it away. All right, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and share. All right, Michael, we good there with the, all right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, thanks everyone for being here. And um, thanks Michael for inviting us, we appreciate it. And um, we're gonna talk about how to spot skin cancer today. It might seem like um, a strange time of year to talk about it, but really any time is a good time. We need to protect ourselves and kind of get into the habit of doing it all, all year round. So we're gonna go ahead and go through all of that today. We're gonna to start with just talking about what cancer is, just a little bit of a um, overview of that, and then what skin cancer is, and then we'll, we'll really hit on a few um, specific types of skin cancer, and then we'll talk about how to reduce your risk, and then the importance of getting um, skin screening exams. Because really, just like everything else, um, early detection gives us our best chance of um, curing it and um, letting the individual really go through an easier process with um, dealing with whatever the diagnosis is. All right, so what is cancer? And this is just um, a really simplified version of what it is, but it's not a single disease. It's more actually, a, it's a group of over a hundred diseases that occurs um, when there's an uncontrolled growth of cells. So you have cells that um, divide every day. We all have that, but sometimes they'll start to divide and grow uncontrollably. And we, we don't always know why. Um, and when that happens and it forms a mass, then that's a tumor. Um, and then all, not all tumors are cancer. Um, some of them are benign, which I'm sure you've, used, you've heard that term before. And those can usually be pretty easily removed. Um, and they don't spread to other parts of the body and don't threaten the individual's life um, for the most part. A malignant tumor is cancerous and that might spread. And that is um, when you hear the word metastasize and that's when it spreads to other parts of the body and it can become very dangerous. And just a side note, so cancers are named according to the part of the body where they begin. So that's important to know when um, someone's diagnosed and then we're figuring out how to treat that. So for instance, if you have someone's breast cancer or it started as breast cancer and it spread to their lungs, then the cancer that's in the lungs, we don't call that lung cancer. It is still breast cancer. And that's important because we need to know where those cells began because the different treatments that we have and the different medications we have are specific to, for instance, breast cancer. So when we're treating that in the lung, it's extremely important for us to know that. So that is breast cancer that has metastasized to the lungs or brain or, or anywhere else that it might go. All right, so um, just a question for you to consider. Um, do you think there's more than one kind of skin cancer? And I answered that already a couple of slides ago, but yes, there is more than one kind and we're gonna talk about those now. So here's the three that we're gonna touch on. There's basal cell, squamous cell and melanoma. And um, the basal cell and squamous cell are considered non-melanoma cancers. And so basal cell, extremely common. It accounts for over 90% of all the skin cancers in the United States. Um, and it can spread locally in, in the spot where it begins and it can damage tissue um, in that area, but it very random, or sorry, it seldom um, spreads to other parts of the body. So that is good news for that one. So squamous cell um, is a little bit more aggressive, but still relatively slow growing. And it can metastasize to other parts of the body, um, in, including internal organs. But it, it is, um, if we catch it, we can usually catch it before it does that because it is slow growing, like I mentioned. Melanoma, um, it usually begins in the pigment of the skin. So um, a lot of times it'll begin inside of a mole 
And when that mole starts to change, that's when you can notice that um, on your own at home. And it's less common than the other two, but it is very dangerous. So um, we'll talk about um, all or these three and what that might look like. And this slide, what, what we're talking about here, these are just you know four examples of different skin cancers. And we ask which one of these is the most dangerous. And our point is, is that you can't tell. These are, these are all potentially dangerous. And to someone like, you know, like us, when we're looking at our skin at home, we can't tell the difference between these. Are these basal cell? Are these, are these squamous? Are they melanoma? So um, that's why those skin screenings are so very important because you want somebody with a trained eye to be able to tell you, yes, you know, let's go ahead and do something about this and, and make sure it's not something more dangerous. So pre-malignant actinic keratosis, and that is a mouthful. I have to say that really slow every time. So um, this is precancerous, and what it is, it looks like dry skin. It's just a rough red scaly patch on your skin. And a lot of times um, you'll feel it before you see it. So when you're putting on lotion or washing in the shower, you might feel a little rough spot on your skin. Um, and I just want you to keep an eye on that. That's never anything to panic about. But what you need to do is if you moisturize it or put on some sort of cream over the counter and it doesn't go away, then that's something to ask your doctor about. If it continues to get bigger, um, and it, if it stays around for more than a couple of weeks. So if it is dry skin, moisturizing will take care of that um, for the most part. So if it doesn't, then please ask um, a professional. All right, so basal cell, um, again, like I mentioned, it's the, it's the most common kind. It's most of the skin cancers that we see, um, rarely spreads, but it can destroy the tissue locally. So you really wanna take care of it, even though it's not deadly, it's not a threat to your life most of the time. Um, you still don't want to um, let it get too big because that's still more of um, that we have to take off and that's a larger scar for you and harder to um, get over. So one thing to think about is if you do have basal cell and you get it taken care of, usually just in the doctor's office, it's not something you need to go to the hospital for um, most of the time, then about 50% of those patients that had a basal cell cancer are going to get another one within five years. And so it's very important if you've had one of these to still go just once a year, have the dermatologist look, you know, head to toe on your body and make sure that those aren't coming back and they can take care of them very easily. It's usually a small pink bump um, or a patch. Um, we find them on the head or the back of the neck many times, um, sometimes the shoulders. And um, it's usually somewhere that has seen a lot of sun. Um, but just remember that it will, it'll, it'll be sometimes a sore or just a patch that'll go away and come back and go away and come back. And it just really doesn't ever stay gone. So that's something you definitely, if you have a spot like that, um, then please ask your doctor to check it. Okay, squamous cell. This is the one that's a little bit more aggressive than the basal cell. Um, looks very similar, a small pink bump or a patch on the skin. Again, it might, might open up like a little bit of a sore and then heal, but then come back over and over again. And this one, the same as basal cell, where you've seen a lot of sun, like the, your ears or your lips, um, the back of your hands, um, your shoulders, anything like that, um, where that has seen a lot of sun, that's the most common areas that you'll see that, excuse me. And, um, and a lot of times we find this in older individuals. All right, so melanoma, this is um, the most dangerous one. Um, it can be life-threatening and it definitely can spread throughout the body to internal organs. And, and that's when it becomes very dangerous. Um, if you have unusual moles, um, it's usually exposure to sunlight, but not always. Sometimes you'll have melanoma in an area that's, you know, never seen sun. So you need to look when you're looking, um, if you do have moles, um, you need to look at all of them. And then if you, um, and of course, if you, if there's some you can't see, you know, on your back or something like that, then it's definitely even more important that you go to your doctor and get that checked once a year. What they're going to do is just look head to toe. And it gives them a baseline, even if they're like, you are great, you don't have any issues, we'll see you next year. 
that way when they do come or when you do come back, they have um, some, you know, baseline to go with. And then a lot of times if there's something they're just a little unsure about and they want to keep an eye on, they'll take pictures. So they'll actually put photos in your file so they can make sure um, and, and see if something has changed. So do you think wearing sunscreen is the only protection that you need um, when you're outdoors? And um, this is false. There are many things you can do besides wearing sunscreen that can protect you from sun exposure. Um, wearing protective clothing is one. Um, there's lots of different clothes out there now that have um, protection built into them. Just clothing itself has some um, protection, but then there's some that have it added. Um, staying in the shade is really a great way um, if, if that's an option for you. It depends what activity you're doing. So if you have shade, um, you want to do that. Staying out of the sun between 10 and 4 is also um, some protection for you. And then applying sunscreen. And what MD Anderson recommends is that you apply sunscreen 30 minutes before you go out into the sun. And, it, and reapply at least every two hours. That is so very important. That's really where we see individuals that end up with a sunburn. Um, they, they probably remembered before they left the house and they put on their sunscreen and they did everything right, but then they were out for the whole day and um, either they forgot to reapply or they just you know forgot the sunscreen, left it at home, something like that. So if you can reapply at least every two hours, if you're swimming or really be playing a sport and really perspiring quite a bit, you can even reapply more often than that. The sunscreen that we recommend is for you to choose at least an SPF of um, 30 or higher. So 30 is as low as you want to go. Um, and then again, reapply. That is the most important part there. And just to give you a little bit of background on SPF, I'm going to read this so I make sure and get it correct. So the numbers are a little odd. So 30 doesn't give you 30% protection. An SPF 4 blocks out 75% of the UV rays. An SPF 15 blocks out 93%. An SPF 30, which is as low as we would like you to go, that blocks out 97% of the harmful rays. So um, anything above that, you're still almost getting 100% at SPF 30, but you're adding additional chemicals. So, um, and I know that is a concern for some, some people. So um, SPF 30 um, is what we recommend. And then of course, we do not want you to use tanning beds. Um, we, we never want you to use those. We don't think that's a good idea. Hey, Kendra, when you... Yeah. When you are applying or reapplying uh, sunscreen, how often would you suggest if you're just either outside doing uh, household chores uh, compared to swimming, compared to maybe athletics or anything like that? So uh, two hours okay. for any activity would be the longest that you would want to go if you're out continuously. But if you swim and um, then when you get out, then go ahead and reapply, dry off. And, and reapply. Um, I know if you're actually playing a sport where you're in a game, like a soccer game or something like that, you might be able to reapply at halftime. You might just need to wait until, um, you know, the game is over. It's that might not work out, but yes, two hours for any other activity. But, um, like when you come out of the water, out of the pool or come out of the ocean, if you're at the beach or whatever, go ahead and reapply right away. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So as far as babies, um, you don't want to put sunscreen on them when they're less than six months old um, and just go ahead and cover them or keep them in the shade um, to protect them and then teach children older than six months old or, you know, whenever they're able to put on their own, make sure and teach them to do that because the earlier we start that habit, the better off they will be, we will be. So um, teach them to apply it, teach them how to apply it and um, and then that will really be good. I know I use this example. Sometimes um, my boys are all grown and gone. And um, one of them played sports in college. And I would get so excited when I would see him in the, in the dugout, you know, before he'd go out on the baseball field and spray the back of his neck and, and put it on his ears. I don't know if he put it anywhere else, but at least he used it a little bit. So anything we can do to make that, you know, habit start early, then, then that's great. Um, I already talked about the tanning beds, definitely don't want to do that. And then also keep in mind, so if even if you're not going to be outdoors 
for long periods of time. Um, if you are driving in your car a lot, um, you, you still want to be able to, when you, when you're getting ready in the morning, make a habit to put on some sunscreen, because if you are, um, what we're seeing is that people that have, you know, drive their car a lot, if they commute or if it's just the kind of jobs, the job they have that arm that's up against the window in their vehicle will get skin cancer on it a lot more often than the other arm. And then also hanging onto the steering wheel. So we'll see it on the backs of the hands in those individuals. So it still can come through a window. So if you're sitting at a window all day long at work as well, you probably wanna go ahead and put on some protection. You're not doing a lot of sweating and that sort of thing. So you don't necessarily have to reapply quite as um, often. But um, keep that in mind. Any sun exposure um, over time, over long periods of time, can be dangerous. So keep, please keep that in mind. All right, we already talked about the babies here. Um, so one risk factor for skin cancer is having blistery sunburns, blistering sunburns as a child. So um, we're putting them at risk very young if we're not um, putting sunscreen on them and, te and teaching them to apply. So definitely um, make that part of your routine. Okay, do you think sunscreen is safe to use on a daily basis? This is um, talked about a lot um, right now and there's a lot of research that's coming out but there's really a lot also that needs to be done. Um, and I know we're doing some um, and I know I'm sure other people are as well. But right now um, sunscreens, um, MD Anderson's stance is that they are safe to use on a daily basis. There are um, other sunscreens, or there's, I shouldn't say other, there's different kinds. So you have a chemical-based sunscreen, and then you have a mineral-based sunscreen that truly blocks the sun. So instead of it absorbing into the skin, um, it really just provides a barrier on top of the skin. And you'll see them at the store. You can get them anywhere. Um, and it says mineral-based. They're very hard to rub in, which um, I know some people don't like, but it protects really protects the skin. It does a great job. And then you don't have to worry about um, the chemicals. So if that is something that's a concern for you, please look for those types um, when you're at the store. And this gives this slide gives you an example of how much you need. So we haven't touched on that yet. So when I'm saying apply sunscreen, and then I'm telling you to reapply sunscreen, about a shot glass worth should cover um, the sun exposed areas on your skin. Um, and every time you reapply, you need that same amount. So really think about it. Um, if you're going out and you have a family of five and you're going to go out to the beach for the day, you need to take a lot of sunscreen. If you're going to reapply on everyone that much every two hours, um, then you need to really supply yourself with that or you end up with too much sun exposure, which of course can make you and the little ones um, miserable if someone actually gets a, a, you know, a bad sunburn in addition to putting them at, you know, at some risk. So keep that in mind on how much you need. And then um, the different kinds of sunscreen you'll see at the store, but it'll, they're showing now because it's really kind of a hot topic. You'll see on the front of the label, it'll say mineral based if that's something that you're looking for. It's usually pretty clear which ones um, have that. Okay, so practicing awareness. So this is um, something that goes for any cancers. We talk about this a lot when we're giving these presentations, whether it's skin or breast or, or whatever topic, we want you to be aware of your body. So when you're getting ready, when you're in the shower, when you're putting on lotion, when you're combing your hair, anything like that, if you see any spots that are new, that weren't there before, or they're changing a little bit, um, then get those checked out. You know your body better than anyone else. Um, if again, the sores that um, just don't seem to heal, they'll heal up a little bit and then come back and go away, um, then that can be an issue. Um, and just make sure and go to the doctor and then check everywhere. They can be in your on the bottoms of your feet. If you have spots under your fingernails, um, in your genital areas, anything that's new that wasn't there before you want to go ahead and ask. And sometimes it's a little, you know, it's hard to ask about some of those things, but you need to bring them up. Remember doctors have heard it all and um, it should not be embarrassing, especially with a physician. And then hard to see areas like your scalp. Um, we see a lot of um, skin cancers in the scalp if individuals um, 
don't wear a hat um, to protect their heads. So, and I, um, I didn't talk about that earlier, but when you're wearing protective clothing, um, a hat with a brim that goes all the way around is extremely important to protect your back and your ears and um, and your scalp as well. So keep that, um, you know, if you keep one in your car even um, for days that you're going out and you, and you don't remember. Um, and then any, remember, remember that I told you that actinic keratosis, you can feel it before you can see it. So when you're applying lotion, um, make sure to, to notice any changes there. All right, this is my favorite slide. It really gives you something to, it gives you a good takeaway here. So these are the things when you're checking your moles or spots or whatever we want to call them um, that you can really say, has this thing changed? So A for asymmetry. So does one half of the mole look like the other half? If not, then it could be an issue. Sometimes that's just the way moles look and they're perfectly fine. But if it's not that way, then you definitely want to have a doctor look at it. They, they will hold almost like a little magnifying glass in their hand and they can look at it and magnify it um, and tell you um, whether or not that needs to be um, biopsied. And then, or they're gonna say, oh, that's fine. That's just, as my doctor calls them, wisdom spots. And you know, you're fine and nothing needs to be done. Um, B for border, does it have an irregular border? So it'll almost look like it's kind of bleeding off to one side and it'll start to, you know, it'll look, you know, like a round mole. And then, you know, as you get older, it'll start to go off to one side, um, but not equally. And then that's definitely something to look at. And then the colors, it'll be an uneven color sometimes. So it'll look like black and brown and um, red, and it'll just, it'll, you know, it won't be just a normal looking mole that's all one color. So if that changes, definitely um, get that checked. The diameter, what we want you to look for is anything that's bigger than the size of a pencil eraser. And that gives you a really good, you know, if, if anything is, is that bigger than that and it's growing, um, changing in any way, then definitely get that checked. And then evolution, just is it, is it changing? Um, that's what we mean by that. And um, we've, you know, said that to you many times today. So anything that changes, does it change in width? Um, does it change in height? Can you feel it more than you could before? Um, you can go and get a skin check and find out if any of these things need to be um, looked at more thoroughly. So the screening exams, um, when you go to um, a professional, whether it's a dermatologist, sometimes your primary care doctor will be able to do this for you. Um, but the people at higher risk, the ones that we really recommend go and get these yearly checks or any ones with red hair and freckling, you're at higher risk. If you have more than 50 moles, um, I've never counted mine, but if, if you feel like you have a lot and um, it's more than 50, then you're in that risk, higher risk category. If you have a family history of melanoma, and then there are also some genetic syndromes that make you more sensitive to sun. So if you have those or know, know anybody with those, then that person is at higher risk for developing um, skin cancer. Um, if you use tanning equipment um, in your life, or if you have a history of the blistering sunburns, like we talked about, um, if you've personally had any basal cell or squamous cell um, spots, then you're at higher risk and you need to get those yearly checks. And then also any prior radiation therapy, um, which can, can include cancer therapy. If you had that um, as a young person, um, then that can sometimes put you at higher risk. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. So as far as um, the last couple of years, um, the pandemic has been, you know, an interesting time for all of us, but we know that um, screening exams, as skin included, includes colonoscopies, um, mammograms, um, prostate screenings, all of those things, um, they've gone down. So the yearly checks that individuals were getting, um, not as many people were getting those. And um, and now um, I think we're catching up. I think people are starting to make their appointments, but what has happened is that we are um, seeing cancer in much later stages than we were seeing it before. And so please, if you're due for one of these exams, do not put it off any longer, go ahead and get that checked. We, um, we definitely wanna get you in as soon as we can. All right.
So um, MD Anderson has all of these things. We have a cancer prevention center that does these skin checks, um, but I know that the doctors all over um, have these as well. Um, so please, if, if you need someone to go to, if you don't already have someone, we'd be happy to um, get you that information. But if you have a dermatologist or a primary care doctor that you can go to and you, um, and you feel like you're one of those individuals at risk and need to get that yearly exam, then that would be great if you just go ahead and make yourself an appointment and get checked. You know, it's peace of mind also when they say, you know what, these are all normal. Um, we don't need to see you for another year, then you're in good shape and you can um, kind of go about your business. All right. Oh, our boot walk is this Saturday. It's just um, an event we do to raise awareness for all kinds of cancers. So if it's something you want to get involved with, you can find that online. And then um, COVID, um, just this is a slide we added, of course, over the last couple of years, just to help stop the spread. We would like individuals to consider the vaccine, um, wear a mask or social distance when you're in crowds of, uh, you know, if you feel like that's something, you're in an area that that needs to happen. Wash your hands, which is absolutely the most important thing. Um, wash them, wash them often, wash them for about 20 seconds. And then also it's about to be flu season. So washing your hands is a fantastic idea anyway. And then of course, get tested. Um, if you feel like you're sick, get, find out what it is, um, COVID flu or whatever other things are out there right now. Um, just knowing what you have can help you decide um, who to be around and it can help stop the spread of that. All right, so for questions, um, there is a phone number there and our website, mdanderson.org slash prevention. Excellent resource. I use it all the time. You can go in in the search bar and type in anything about skin cancer um, or any cancer. We have um, prevention information about exercise and um, diet, and there's recipes and there's a wealth of information. So if you need anything, that's a really great resource for you. All yeah. right. Um, there's a phone number there. And for me, let me stop sharing here. Well, thank you, Kendra. We appreciate you coming out and giving, giving us an update for sure. Um, for those of you that don't know, we will be planning uh, quarterly updates from our healthcare providers uh, moving forward in the 2022 year. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, if we get any questions throughout the uh, day, we'll get them forwarded to our MD Anderson team and get them responded to. Uh, feel free to share this video on your social media pages as well as um, uh, our, our YouTube page. So uh, if that's it, thank you guys for coming today or tuning in. So we appreciate you and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you. Bye.